The first talk we have is focusing on the actual NR Plus standards itself, or DEC 2020 in uh, Etsy speak. Um, and I'm very pleased to uh, introduce as presenter for this session, Yussi Numinen. Uh, Yussi also works for Wirepass, but the hat that he's wearing today is that of um, the XC, uh, TC DEC uh, vice chair. So Yussi has supported the, uh, that, that group in, uh, in the standards development. Yussi has 30 years experience developing wireless comms technologies and standards. Um, again, like uh, many, uh, many others, he's, he's had standardization roles in Nokia, ST Micro, ST Ericsson and Ericsson as well. Um, Yussi joined Wirepass in 2015, responsible for radio strategy uh, standards, regulations, IPRs, and uh, has, I guess, a pretty in-depth understanding of the DECT NR Plus standard. Uh, that's probably putting it mildly. So uh, without more ado, let me hand over to you, C, to uh, uh, introduce us to the standard. Thank you. Thanks, Walter, for, for introducing me. I hope that I have some, some information about the, of the standard itself. So let me share my screen and then we get started. So yes, so yes, my, my presentation is now by boring technical stop, topic, basically that uh, introducing you as, as to what actually is the DEC, DEC 2020 and, and as, as, as a part of the IMT 2020 technology family acknowledged by, by ITU. So I will walk you through on the, on the, on the some, some introduction topics about this, how this fits on, the, on this IMT 2020 technology triangle and then some some couple of, of slides about the system architecture and, and basically topics which has been already addressed by a little bit by by Teppo and, and will be probably addressed by the other speakers of this session and then then introducing a, a, some of the key features which are basically creating this re reliable communication and I hope that I can shed some more lights about those those features and how they impact on the on the on the reliability and then a couple of slides about the initial performance results which are based on the simulations and and and, and analysis of the of the technology itself so i hope that i can fit on the time what is what is assigned to me but that's a that's an objective what i'm trying to trying to cover my presentation so the first is this uh, this uh, track to, uh, deck 2020 new radio introduction as as that what has been a design goal for the for the DC deck uh, for for developing this one so we wanted to create a, a technology which is which is has has a technical characteristics that it can be can be deployed by anybody and it can operate uh, can be operated by anyone and and then then also can be used anywhere of course, on providing that you are you operate on the on the on the allowed spectrum, and also that during the, the operation the, the operation must be simple. It should be autonomous, and it should be capable for coexisting with the other local networks, which we are envisioning that will be will be in the future the case in 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 many areas, and it should have a very good or excellent uh, capabilities for operating on the shared spectrum. And of course, the, what is important for the for the IMT 2020 point of view is that it should be easy to, to deploy on other frequency bands, which are which are identified for the IMT 2020 technologies. And and this, the second thing, which is which is also very important on the on, on this one, is that it should be an apl application agnostic. So we would not like to have any specific features down to the radio levels, which are specific for certain use cases. But it should be as agnostic and, and, and multi-purpose as possible, and and then then enabling that both the massing type of communication corners for the IMT 2020 requirement as well as the ultra reliable low latency corner of the requirements could be addressed on the same on the same technology. And the important thing, what what I see as 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 on my my my. My takeaway on this picture is basically that what we can do with the DEC 2020 is basically we can address on the same specification and standards, both on these corners on the on the on the triangle. Whereas the 3GPP is basically that the LT, LT generation is able to address on this corner 
and the phi tree is basically addressing on this corner of the two corners of the of the standards. So what this brings is basically that we with, with the same product fundamental design we can address two different important and interesting IoT use case corners on the on, on the future digitalization. Regarding the, the HCTC activity, then that what, what actually has been produced and what is the outcome of the of the of the standard itself. So, so this slide is now explaining the, the current state of, of the of the standard. So, so the, the main standard uh, series is now con considering five series, five, five parts of the of the standards. But there's one which is the overview and basically is explaining the, the, the system itself. Then we have part two, which is the radio reception and transmission requirements, which is covering the, the, uh, the operating bands and operating bandwidth for the, for the release one, for the, for the equipments. Then we have a part three, which is the physical layer and, and, and uh, is covering the physical layer structures. Part four and part five are, are then covering the MAC and, and DLC and convergence layers. So basically those layers which are up to the interface to the different application frameworks. Then there is also a, a evaluation group final report for the IMT 2020 evaluation about the deck. So, so if, if people are interested, that is also having a full, full visibility of the, of, the, of the technology analysis for, for this technology. And it could be a useful background information about the performance estimations. Today, uh, Etsy TC deck is, is working on the harmonious standards, which is this part. Uh, 103, uh, 406 part uh, dash two, which is then then producing the harmonic standard for the DEC 2020 radio. And we have a work items ongoing on the application profiles. And these application profiles basically means that, that we, are, we are defining that as an example, the smart metering profiles that the application itself is DLM's COSEM type of, of, of protocols, but how should you, uh, configure the radio in such a manner that it should, you are you are op uh, operating with optimal performance on on with that application, and we would have a similar type of of different applications probably also on the PMSC industry as well as as building automation and so forth. And this the idea is basically that as we have a, the best expertise of the radio itself, we want to ensure that that applications are taking the best benefits for the, for the technology itself. And of course, we have now started the, the, the release two uh, enhancements for the, for the standard. So there are a couple of, of, of improvements which have been, been proposed and, and, and the technical development for those ones will be continuing as we speak. Then a few words about the system architecture, which has been a bit referred earlier. So the basic idea is, is that, that, uh, that this system is, is designed such that we can, we can support different type of, of uh, deployment uh, uh, scenarios and, and use cases. So basically the mesh, what is the, of course the, the main interest for the wire pass. And this is designed for, for the, from, the, from the understanding that we can provide a local network, but also support a wide area deployment such as citywide networks as, as we were showing on TEPOS presentation. Then, uh, then we can support also the, the, the star topology, which is basically a subset for the, for the mesh topology. So you can basically understand that the, that the star topology is basically a one, one cluster type of, of, of use case where you are, you are having a, a single link uh, connections to the, to the, to the, the RDFTs on the, on the system. And then as, as, a, as the, the last one is basically that, of course, you can support the point-to-point -point links between different equipments with this radio. And all these are, are basically possible for the, for the same technology and, and, and protocols what we have been developed. The state-of-art uh, coexistent ex, uh, capabilities has been designed in, 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 in light that, uh, that, of course, we can coexist with the existing deck and, and other other radios when we are operating on the shared spectrum but between two different deck uh, 2020 networks we have actually introduced a very advanced features which are allowing allowing us to actually synchronize between two un uncoordinated networks transmissions on the same area if if they if they see see a need for that but 
basically the point is that standard is, is offering such an opportunity that you can actually do this type of, of very close and, and tight coordination between diff different networks if, if, if seen necessary. And, and this, this, is, this is really, I think, a powerful new feature what we can offer on this, on this technology. Then the, the, the design on the radio itself is symmetrical. So of, of course, we have the same receiver and transmitter uh, access modes. And this is simplifying the, the, the product design for the, for the equipments compared to the, as, as an example for the cellular uh, design where the uplink and downlink radio axes are actually not, not symmetrical, but different. And then, then on top of this, we have, we have these device-centric and decentralized decisions and, and which are enabling the autonomous operation for, for, the, for the networks. I will come back on this on, on the next slide a bit more. Then the, the, the back-end connectivity basically, as was referred also in the presentation, we don't take any stand on that one. So that can be a wired, wired Ethernet type of connection if that is on, on some, some local premises, or it can be any type of wireless connectivity, what is deemed necessary for such a, such a deployment. The basic idea on the on this on this system architecture is that that we have a, all devices are, are equal to each other. But they can they can adopt different roles. So so basically we have RDFT, which is the the entity which has a backend connection, and and then the other other equipments are basically seeking seeking connections to the RDFTs, and and we can have a, have a uh, devices which can have a double roles. They can have a RDFT, but but also RDPT roles, and these are basically the routing routing devices on the system. And the, the roles of these, these nodes can be, can be autonomous. So they can actually, based on the radio environment they're operating, they can, they can change their roles to, to routing or non-routing routing devices as per need for such, such, a, such a deployment. Then a bit more on this decentralized autonomous operation itself. So what does it mean in practice is that, that this, this radio access device autonomy is, is giving a, a benefit on that. That in, in the event that as an example, that we have a, we lost the connectivity to the backend. So this FT is, is not able to operate or, or provide or transfer the traffic to the backend. Then the equipment which has been connected to that one can reroute the, the connections to those, those those nodes which has a has a operating connectivity to the backend, and this is autonomous and can be happening uh, as uh, without any intervention from from external body, and this gives a robustness for the for the radio condition changes on the on the on the deployment, which I which I, I believe is, is a very very strong asset for the for the future use cases. Then the system autonomy is such that that uh, we have a, this uh, a flat radio architecture design as such. So it basically means that we can directly connect to the backend cloud services, local clouds or local servers or public clouds without any complex uh, intermediate uh, solutions in between. And this makes this very, very, let's say, interesting and, and, and simple, simple this point of view versus the, the, some of the other radio technologies. Last but not least, the, the autonomy is, is also uh, related to this, this application domain. So we want these radios to be uh, agnostic for the application. So as an example, it's totally possible that we can, in the same network, deliver both non-IP and IP-based traffic if, if needed. And, and, and this, is, this is totally possible. And I and, and think this could be interesting on some, some building automation cases as an example. But as well, may be the case for the for the for the media production as well as we have heard earlier on the discussions. Then regarding this uh, uh, new radio, uh, this deck twenty twenty new radio key features. A couple of words about uh, the key features of the of the technology itself. So we have, as as we telling earlier, that we have a very very. Uh, Flexible radio access technology and, and which is based on the on the dynamic channel selection. So the thing is that the, that equipments are, are selecting 
the operating frequencies based on the, the measurements on the environment and, and selecting the least interfere channels on, the, on that location. So that means basically that there is no frequency planning required. They will associate to the next peers what they, they see on the radio, radio environment and, and, and then forming the network autonomously. And this is this is also then then uh, enhanced by this this that uh, that we have this uh, very very advanced capabilities for the for the local synchronization between two different networks on the same area. So I believe this is a this is a really strong asset for the for the future. I will have a couple of words about this uh, the radio access itself. So we have a state of art OFD and radio which is combined by the, the channel coding and, and hybrid AIQs features, which are actually been, been in the cellular domain for, for decades already, but we are exploiting the, the benefits on those also on this radio. The interesting uh, future proofness of the, of the technology itself is that we can now support with this, this uh, standard, the mesh radio topologies, the star topologies, and then, then uh, point to point with the same same protocol stack and, and actually products product queues as well if, if if needed. We can support the low latency operation. I will come back on that a bit later later slides of what that actually what that actually means and, and what are the capability boundaries on that one. Then the third one is that we can support different type of quality of services on, 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 the, on the radio access. So both scheduled and unscheduled services are possible. And, and this basically means that, that for the scheduled services, we can actually guarantee that you a certain, certain uh, uh, use case or, 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 or user may, may have, a, have a continuous service from the, from the protocol point of view and radio point of view, which is then, then probably suitable for, for some delay, delay sensitive services. The unscheduled services is, is something that which we definitely need for the for the industrial IoT cases where the events are, are probably the, the triggering the radio radio transmission and, and, and reporting some events. And these unscheduled services, which uh, would then also co combine with this uh, or enabling the, the ultra low power consumption for the devices since the equipment don't need to wake up until they have something to report. So this is giving us a possibility to, to create a, a use cases where the devices may be sleeping for, for several hours, if not days, if, if they have nothing to report. Then regarding the, the mobility, and, and, and we have a seamless handover. So, so the, the specification supports that each device can, can actually associate on multiple routing, routing nodes and, and, and then decide by themselves that towards which route, route that they are actually forwarding their traffic. So they can have a similar type of, of performance or, or capability as VLAN handovers are having that the device decides when it's uh, disassociating from the, from the previous, previous connection. And then a bit on a forward looking comment uh, and, and a feature is this uh, MIMO support so the physical layer is is already designed to support up to eight stream mimo uh, transmissions if any any application would require such a such a performance which is then giving us a a lot lot to improve and and, and develop for the future bit rates in in the future if if, if such a use cases exists and up to date uh, uh, security. So this is AS128, which is basically the same type of algorithms what we, the cellular systems are having on, on, the, on their side. A little bit you, more. You on see the we've got about five minutes left. Uh, Ooh, for right. questions. Then I need to speed up. <laughs> All right. So then, then uh, the, basically the DDM, FDM based access, the, the main takeaway on this one is, is that, that we have a we can have a latencies on the on, on, for the minimum tra uh, minimum transmission unit between 26 to 208 microseconds, and this comes from the from the fact that we have a, this flexible numerology on the standards. But you can assume that that there is a there is a future improvement and, and a room for for very low low communication on the on the system. And then then uh, regarding this uh, characteristics of the of the physical layer. We have a multiple uh, modulation and coding 
coding capabilities, so which is then then giving us a, a possibility to exploit the, the channel on the, on the on the highest bit rate when possible, and this is then then some which is autonomously supported by the devices, and and this gives a a, a interesting capabilities as an example for the routing equipment that they can actually combine multiple transmissions with a with a higher modulation and coding coding cases. And then the frequency bands, this 1.9 gigahertz is, is certainly the, the main, main interest, but we have already now 18 different uh, IMT2020 TDD bands below 6 gigahertz supported on the standard. So there is a already built in a extension possibilities on the standards for, for this perspective. Then quick words about this performance before, before Walter is stopping me. Then, then uh, this is a, a, a document from from Maxim Penner from the from the Leipzig University from Hannover, uh, and a part of this evaluation information. The takeaway on this this slide, what I want to highlight is that that the dashed line on this on the right hand curve is basically showing the ideal channel and and a performance, and and the and the and the solid line is basically that what is what is based on the on the our our standard. What is the performance? And, and the, the main takeaway is that we are, I would say, as good as possible in, in, in the standard quality point of view, exploiting the channel, channel performance of, 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 the, of the communication. And the, and, the, and the left side of the curve is basically showing that, that how does, what is the signal to noise ratio of the different modulation and coding, coding uh, levels. So, so basically this blue one is, is the baseline for the control plane. And then when we are increasing the modulation, of course, the signal to noise ratio requirement is increasing. The important takeaway on this one is that when we are combining this with the hybrid ARQ performance, the, the, the improved signal to noise ratio after the one retransmission is 5 dB roughly. So basically it means that if we, if we are operating on this, this uh, MCS2 as an example here, but the, the signal to noise ratio is a little bit less than that, and we are failing. We can be absolutely sure that we can we can have it uh, correctly received after the first retransmission. And this is this is fantastic feature for the reliable communication point of view. Of course, that is increasing the latencies, but very useful feature for those those applications which can which can tolerate it. I, I am going to have to leave in here now, you see, and... Uh, this is the last one, and then I'll stop. Okay, very quickly. <laughs> yeah, because the, 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 what I want to say on this one is that this, this green dots is basically the ITU requirements for the, for the MMTC use cases. The, the, the actual requirement is that you would have a one device per square meters and, and a, as, as a requirement for the ITU. And now reflecting what Teppo was showing earlier about the asset, asset uh, use cases, we know already that the industry requirement for the, that one is probably 1,000 equipments on, on the cubic meter. So, so my, my key message on this one is that this is not the industrial MMTC requirement. It's much tougher than this one. And we can, we can operate and meet and provide such a, such a technology for those purposes. Okay, thank you very much, you see. I'm sorry to have to chop you off there. It's, it's always difficult trying to present a technology standard in a limited amount of time. Um, and I won't ask how many pages thick the Etsy standard is, but... <laughs> well, this is... This thank, is you, um, thank you very much. Um, just easy, one, one quick one. time for one quick question that's come up on the chat. Uh, okay. A very simple one. Uh, what is the maximum transmit power and is dynamic power control used? And uh, the maximum transmit power is, is this 23 dBm, as the, as the same as the legacy deck has. has yeah, on okay. And dynamic power control? A dynamic power control is that the minimum power levels for the, for the devices is, is defined as a minus 40 dBm, 40 dBm. Yeah. So okay. that would then, then give us a, a possibility to reuse the frequencies. Yeah.